Hello, hello, everybody. This is Europe One Zoom first year webinar part two. Uh, my name is Eti Guk, and I will be your host for this time to introduce a little bit myself. I've been working with Southwestern now for uh, 15 years, and this is my 16th summer or year coming up with the Southwestern. Uh, and uh, regards to the situation, as Sveiko was talking a little bit uh, last time, we don't have a lot of updates uh, since um, the virus is still spreading around the world. Uh, on a positive note, Germany today announced that they are seeing already some flattening uh, in terms of the virus spreading. So hopefully uh, this is uh, giving some good, good light uh, all over the uh, world. But also, uh, like Veiko mentioned last time, that there are things we can control, there are things we can influence, and there is things we can accept. This virus definitely is a thing we cannot control. This is a thing we can maybe a little bit influence, but definitely something uh, we can or we should or and need to accept. So I want to say a big thank you to all those who have been uh, keeping the social distance, trying to work at the home office, uh, doing their uh, school stuff from the home, avoiding those big land parties with your friends. So having those sacrifices, it helps everybody out and we can go through this much more faster. Also wanna say a big thank you for all those people that have uh, tuned in for this webinar and uh, are doing a preparation for the summer. Uh, as on this slide questionnaire that Tunis has put up, it shows that we have uh, over 30 people that are on this uh, call right now have done already uh, close to 10 cycles. And there is more than 20, uh, or actually more than 20 uh, cycles done by uh, seven or eight people. So, which is uh, pretty exciting. But why we want to get you together is this, that we have some good information to share with you, to help you to get um, ready for the summer. And we have two good parts as well today lined up. Uh, and um, Tunis, did you want to share a little bit about uh, Slido? That if some people have uh, questions, then what they need to do? Yes, so if you have any questions, just uh, put it back here. So put uh, remind reminders, so keep in mind that code here. Let me share it with you. So this uh, first year webinar. <clears throat> so when you have a question, just come here and type it in, and uh, we'll take the questions um, as we go. So I'll I'll let the, I'll let the people know that we have questions coming up. So mm -hmm. so if you have a question, go to Slido and and type in this first year webinar, and you can ask a question. Mm -hmm. So we try to make it as interactive as possible. So if you have some questions, then, then please uh, do it. Moving on then to our uh, first uh, speaker, uh, who is from a uh, great city of Elva that has 5,000 uh, people and Alar as one of them uh, being from there. Uh, and uh, Alar has been in Southwest and already uh, 10 summers working with the Alpha Group. He's a graduated uh, man, so well educated. He uh, has um, a degree in aviation management. Uh, also, he's a very successful bookman. Uh, so he has um, sold a little bit over 50,000 units in his short career in, in Southwestern. His best summer being 9,000 units and his best week, a little bit over Sizzler, 1,430 units. He's uh, addicted to Sizzler, uh, uh, has been there every summer. Then also, um, uh, it's been a whip trip, which is a little bit the more exclusive trip that uh, as a first year, you need to sell 3,200 uh, units, or as a manager, you need to grow from one summer to another 3,200 uh, units. And Allar has won it uh, twice. Then Allar also is a smart man, likes uh, residual income. So that's why he has uh, signed up a lot of people for our online product and actually has won also two times a Freddy. Um, and Freddy is, is um, kind of like a Southwestern Oscar that is given out uh, once a year in, uh, during the GRS. Uh, last day, there is a, a huge reception and um, all the top people from the different categories are recognized. 
and Allara has won two times, then the number one company online sales of all, which is awesome. Also, besides being a great salesperson, he's a great leader, a number a one org leader in 2016, and not from Europe, but actually all over the world, which is uh, very cool. Uh, and uh, Southwestern has blessed uh, Allar not only with uh, these good results, but also has blessed with uh, a great uh, a spouse. Um, uh, and right now he's dating with a former book girl and a master organizer uh, for Andres and a lot of people uh, from uh, Europe One. And I guess that's one of the reasons also why Allar now is so organized. Uh, and one thing what I uh, admire and, and respect about Allar is this, that he really lives out the principle of taking the job seriously, uh, but not himself. So every time when you are spending time with Allah, then he has uh, tons of jokes to tell. And once you are following him, then you kind of have this feeling that you are not working at all because he has not taken himself seriously, but at the same time, he's very professional. So uh, Allah, the floor is yours and uh, we are ready to listen. All right. Let me put the PowerPoint on. Tell me if you can see it. No? Yes, we can see it. Mm -hmm. All right, hello book people across uh, Europe. I guess a lot of people from uh, Tallinn and Tartu, they don't even realize that we have uh, actually people from Latvia. Uh, hello Latvian friends, uh, Lithuania, Poland and uh, Slovakia listening in as well. So this is a very international meeting. So uh, I hope I'm not going to screw it up because otherwise you're going to have a crappy summer. Well, let's not do that. Hope everybody's healthy. If not, make sure you're not going to sneeze on my computer. I don't want to catch a computer virus. I don't know if that's how it works. But today we're going to cover the next part of uh, cycle of selling, uh, which is probably the most intimidating one for us all. So how to close and how to answer objections. And we get uh, closer to the answer if the person is going to buy or not. The nervousness comes to the stomach. Maybe if you've been practicing, you don't feel it so much yet. You're just more thinking about the words you're saying. But while you're on the book field, you know, it's going to come, especially your first couple of weeks when those sales can be rare. Uh, at first, you know, it, it might not, but for a lot of us, uh, when we're starting up, you know, I had one weak customer on my first day and I had a zero on the next. I found two on the third, but, you know, it's not very often always you have once in a while those days when you just work and work and work and nothing happens and then you know if somebody's really excited and seemingly you know it's gonna buy but uh, you know the close is still ahead what are you gonna say <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna cover today is uh, how to do close uh, why and what is it even but all in all what is close it's uh, there to help person make a decision right we're gonna get the decision so it's not per se the words that we say in our uh, own sales talk, but close can be, you know, whatever we can, you know, if you want, you can say, so what do you think? That's also a close, right? You can say, so do you want to buy? That's another close. But the question is, is it good? Well, I would say not. Because our close that we use in Southwestern has stood the test of time. Um, have a story about it as well because uh, years ago while I was uh, selling books uh, there was a family where dad was a former bookman and um, I was going through the price build up and telling them the price then after that uh, dad stopped me uh, looked at mom and asked me you know if he can take it from there I said I don't know sure and then the, dad says so honey uh, you know what uh, everybody likes about the way he does business he takes orders now but you have an op we have an option to break it into smaller payments. So if we would buy the set, that would make it easier, wouldn't it? And then the mom says, oh really? That's a great idea. That would make it very much easier. And then he goes on ahead with, uh, with the clothes for me. I was laughing on the side. Dad was also laughing. Mom didn't really know or understand why the heck we were laughing. 
but she was on board and they ended up buying the books because it was a very smooth way. But that's the point of the story is that we have the clothes for a reason, why we do it. And we've had uh, something very similar for the last 20, 30, 50 years we've been doing that. And why we do it is because people don't like making decisions. And this process is just an easier way to help people make up their mind. So we're going to go through some uh, tips on what clothes should be about and how to do it properly. Uh, but also we're going to talk about some negative alternatives, which are very easy to you know, come by and uh, what to avoid. So there's a good way and a bad way how to close. And um, my first point is about helping moms make a decision. It's not about pressuring mom into buying books if she's not on board. It doesn't mean just staring at her and waiting until she decides, but it's just to use the process to help her get closer to a decision. Step by step. So we start with the uh, intent. I'm here to help their families, not pressure them for helping me make money. They will see that through. So if you're there just because you really need it, even the words won't matter because you're going to pressure them. So be with a good heart, try to help them make a good decision. And next, let's talk about the body language. So try to be really right back and relaxed. You know, shoulders down, talking slowly and low, keeping steady eye contact, nod and smile. Just be chill. You might even need to do a little uh, extra buying atmosphere for your own self. We you want to say, you know what, Alar, it doesn't really matter what she decides. I know she will be happy with our books if she ends up buying them, but it really doesn't matter for me. It's up to her. Either way is fine. So sometimes in my head during glows when I'm when I'm doing the words because I've you know done them a million times, I know them by heart, so I don't have to think about the words. So while I do the words and I talk to her and give her the steps, I calm myself down. It's okay, it's up to her what she wants to do. So make sure, you know, when you practice as well, then sit. Not like a weirdo, but you know, a little bit looser, you know. Back, uh, your back, back against uh, your chair or couch. Um, you know, just smooth and low, it's okay. Next, let's talk about what you've been hearing for months. Use the sales talk, use it word for word. Best part about clothes is that there's no need to change it. Like your conversations in the introduction might change because people sometimes ask other questions. They ask about uh, you know, uh, your home country and about some extra things about the books and so on. But with clothes, it really doesn't need any changing. Do it word for word. It's completely, you know, funny to see how we practice clothes and everybody knows it by heart. And when I have gone following younger dealers through the summertime, how they have lost the structure by week three, because many people have, haven't bought. So what they do is, you know, they go through the price buildup. And since they're not confident in you know, people actually purchasing anything, they go through the price buildup and they're like, um, so uh, what do you think? Sounds good or? So they've lost the confidence in the sales stock. And, but put yourself in the mom's shoes, if you think about it. If somebody has just told you that you know, the price is 500 bucks, and the next question is, so what do you think? In her head, you just asked her, so do you want to buy? And this puts so much pressure on you. Uh, on her you might take the pressure off um, from yourself it's like well it's up to her now she has to decide but this is not an easy way for her to make a decision when you just throw it in her in her face imagine if somebody would have called you um, in november or just recently whenever you were selected to the team and uh, called you up and said that hey i'm allar i'm working with southwestern we're gonna go and sell books this summer do you want to come and sell books with us how big of a chance would it be that you would say, yeah, sure, I don't have anything to do. 
this is a process you have to think it over and you know smoothly get there that's why we have so many meetings and we think it over but we do use clothes as well and it's for you to make a decision so be there for the moms to help make uh, help their ma make their mind up hopefully so far people are with me still listening um you know put the beer down if you're already drinking next part let's talk about uh, you know how to take action and be being assumptive so assumptive what does it mean it means that you are acting as if you knew it's gonna happen but remember point two you're fine either way they don't really have to buy but at the same time you your confidence and your you know conviction in the products and how much they're going to help the family out this is going to turn into the customer's conviction and confidence so you do need to be assumptive don't wait just wait there awkwardly and assume that mom will take it over and take initiative and start deciding for you i have had many of those occasions but it's rare most people need help to make up their mind so your job is to move on through the close Obviously, if somebody, you know, after the first or second section would say, you know, actually, I'm not really sure yet. You're not just going to force them into. That's why we have answering objections part and, you know, how to um, read them and so on. But mainly, if somebody's like, yeah, I think so, you know, you just move on. Be confident in what you're selling because people, if they end up getting your products, they're going to be good. And teach them how to use them, give them tips, give them compliments, but they're going to be good in the family just you know understanding that people don't like making decisions and you're there to help so those are my four ways of good and bad approach very good good and bad approach to doing close but then objections come for some reason all of the people will not buy right away so they're gonna tell you that they don't have money or that they can't afford it or it's too much. They're gonna talk that you know they need to talk to their, their spouse, their uh, their husband, their wife. They uh, they don't know what they're gonna think. They're not sure if you know the kids would use it. Are we actually needing this product? A lot of it has to do with trust. Do they trust you? Do they trust that the books are good? Do they trust that they will get them? <laughs> Sometimes they have these misconceptions like, well, when I give you the money, you know, how can I be sure that I will even receive any products? So the trust needs to be there. Even if you have, you know, the old objection answers by heart, if you're a sleazy salesman, it's not gonna happen. So you're not gonna sell them uh, anything if you have no trust. So it starts with that. They don't have to trust you enough to, you know, put you in their testimony uh, when they die, but they need to trust you enough that, you know, you have their best interest in mind and you know about your products. But be ready for that. Objections are good. Just be, you know, chill about them. I think about objections as they are questions. just takes time to process through sometimes. Just that if you think about yourself, if you have a 500 to $800 decision, you know, you might want to think a second. And this is a logical thing. A smart person might object just because, you know, they want to test you also. And like, well, I don't know, is it actually worth it? Or I don't know if we have the money for this. Your job is not behind the objection, but the point is that they're thinking, is it worth it? You know, the value and the cost are they about at, at least equal? Or is the value so much higher they're not going to object? But if they're not sure about it and the price is way higher than the value in their head, they need to help raise the value. They need to give them new information. And based on new information, people make new decisions. Um, same case, you know, with uh, just everyday life. Um, have you ever asked somebody out and they said no and then you know in the future time they actually did um, have you ever 
like I was a complete hater of all Mac, uh, Mac and Apple uh, products. When Andres started yapping about all of this, said, Apple, Apple here, Apple there, look at this. I was a very skeptical person. You know, I had my Android, I had my HTC. I don't know if this company even exists anymore. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I needed new information and based on that I made a new decision and now I have all kinds of crap. I've spent thousands of dollars in their stores. I don't know if I'm smart or not, but you know, people do make new decisions. So think about objections more of a you know, question rather than just that they said no. And there's a process on how to answer them. And this is not a manip manipulative process but it's just a logical way on how to how people respond to things so let me give you those write them down so the first step when somebody tells you we're not sure is to listen shut up and listen s-u-a-l let them talk you know if they say that you know we really love the books we just don't have the money right now oh okay makes sense so you emphasize, repeat it back. Okay, just don't have the money right now. Okay, it makes sense. You know, money doesn't really grow in trees, does it? Sometimes they start talking about, you know, we had this expense and that expense. Sometimes they, we just ended up buying a new car. So are you, I oftentimes, you know, I don't say that, oh, okay, it totally makes sense. That's expensive, yada, yada. What about, you know, kids, kids education is so important, right? Don't do it. Say that, oh, cool. What, what kind of car did you buy? Then they say something, uh, Dodge, Dodge Caravan, okay, very cool. That's a mom's car, right? Are you planning to have new, new kids? <laughs> so whatever, reflect back to her. You know, sometimes they have had medical issues and they will talk about medical bills. It doesn't mean that they don't have any money. It needs, you know, they just need to be heard. Sometimes, you know, they will, you know, if they feel like they're heard, they're understood and you're, okay about figuring out payment plans that work for them, they will still buy. They might not have the money per se right this moment, but you help them make the decision. And uh, a lot of it is just about listening, repeating back, emphasizing, uh, being empathetic about the situation. Next part is feel felt found. This is an easy way on how to uh, help people you know, see perspective. So you put them in somebody else's situation. So you listen, you repeat it back or em uh, be, uh, being empathetic about the situation. That's the feel part, right? Ah, oh, cool. All right. Totally makes sense. I, I know how it feels. You know, I, when I say that, uh, when they say that they don't have the money right now, or it's a little bit too expensive, I say, no, it makes sense. Money doesn't really grow on trees, right? Because I grew up with a single ma a mom. I totally understand how I feel. You might not have done, you know, grown up with a single mom. Don't say that then, don't lie. But you know, you can find uh, another uh, situation. Like Julie Myers, she's a single mom. She works as a nurse. Uh, she's trying to get her uh, C, uh, like the RN license, she's right now a, a nurse's assistant. And she said it's tough sometimes because you know, you pay so much for the college, kids are expensive, and money goes out the door quicker than it comes in. She's like, okay, I'm being you know, hurt. The person feels like I've been in that situation. But when, um, so she felt the same way. So I totally understand how you feel. She felt the same way. And that person was in the same boat as you were. But then she found out that, you know, she was thinking about it. And she was like, well, you know, with the books, we can use it for the next eight years. And she knew that, you know, Carlson has some math problems. It doesn't get any easier from now. It's only fourth grade in fifth. It's going to be harder. In middle school, definitely harder. And she said that she doesn't probably know how to help him out. And she won't see a product in school like this. So she was thinking that, you know, if I can do smaller payments, put it on my paydays, uh, small little installments that I can handle, I can probably do it. And then, you know, either you re-demo or you go to re-close. Sometimes they are like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Then you go to reclose and you say that, you know, and that's what everybody likes about the way I do business is that I take orders now and families have an option to break it into smaller payments. Just having that option makes it easier, doesn't it? And you go back to the close. Sometimes they're not there yet. It was not only about the money. It was the issue of, you know, 
money and I don't know if it's going to be worth it and where are we going to use it. In those cases, make sure that uh, not only saying you know, money, but you're also talking about the product, how good it is. So go to read them all. You can, the easiest way is that, you know, if you say, I don't really understand how you feel, I don't want you to make any decisions, you know, hasty decisions that you're not going to be happy with. So let's do this. Let me show you quickly one more section while you think about it. A very perfect way on how to calm them down. So let me, it makes sense. I don't want you to rush into anything that you're not sure about. Let me show you quickly one or two more sections while you think about it. Easy. You take your book out, or it's already out there, but you know, you open it up and you say, well, what else, what was, uh, what other cool subjects did he like? Did he enjoy, you know, history when he was back in school, or when he was school time? You show him something else. Ask a couple of uh, emotion, like questions to get them talking again. Does it make sense? How do you like it so far? Looks pretty cool, might be helpful. And then go back to the close. And like what people like about the way I do business is that I take orders now and you go back to the close, same way, word for word. Redemo and reclose. So far good. Silence is the best way to understand, yes. So in conclusion, remember, uh, close has three parts. Johan, Johan, and uh, Johan, and uh, bonus material. Uh, we promised you bonus material every day, and today is no exception. First off, give yourself time. This is a skill of a lifetime to learn. It's good for a lot of situations, for handling, you know, uh, work situations later down the road. Uh, it's for handling relationship situations down the road. This is a very good skill to learn, is how to answer objections, how to talk about you know, issues. That's what it really is. Talking about you know, issues, why we can't make a decision. It's not about buying, buying books only. In this case it is, but just take, give yourself time. It will not come naturally through just practicing in spring. You can't expect that you know, in the beginning of the summer, when we start going, it's gonna be easy right away. It's like, oh, it's smooth and I know how to answer and how to, how to read demo. People learn this in like multiple summers. So it's a process you will get better. You know, at the end of the summer, you'll already know how to answer a few of these things, but you will get better and better and better. And then if you practice throughout the life, then you're gonna be a good conversationalist, good leader and so on. Second part, practice. It's still worth practicing, right? Since it takes time, start sooner, start right away. Start writing out, you know, how would you answer those things? Then ask your manager, you know, is there a, good way and how to answer those things. Do they have a manual part about this? What can I learn? Next is uh, become an expert in knowing your books. The pro point is that then you know what to read them and your conviction in the products is so much higher. And when your conviction is higher, then mom's conviction is higher as well. And then the big thing is that don't, you don't have to sell every single person. It's okay. You know, every single mom does not need to buy your books. Just make sure that you don't let them sell you ideas that people don't need your books. Your system is awesome. People love this. Whenever, you know, I go and meet principals in the summertime, they, they love the system. They give me testimonials. They give me recommendations. So professionals all over America have bought these books, have, you know, uh, complimented giving good testimonials about it. Some moms just are not open-minded. Some moms are you know, not in the focus while you went to visit there, just bad timing. And sometimes we're not really good at explaining. You know, sometimes we came across, you know, know that your products are good, what you're doing is good. And don't let them sell you ideas that you know, people don't need them. We have a school system. Well, no. Ask answers from your, from your uh, SM or SL. You will, they will explain you why, you know, whatever they have at home, this is still a good investment. So let's keep rocking. This is my part. Thank you for attention. Dennis, do we have any questions that we need to answer? We can, I can see that you are a good, uh, my video as well. 
you see that you are a good salesperson. You just uh, claimed the idea so well that we don't have any questions at all. So, no, thank good, you. Good <laughs> part, but, but we had people, people commenting. There was one anonymous comment said, Allah, you're awesome. And <laughs> one not anonymous said, very good stuff. So, people right. were very stunned. <laughs> I appreciate it. So that went easy. Thank you, Allah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alar. Maybe for some people it was a little bit uh, too much of information. Maybe it sounds a little bit of overwhelming, which is totally okay. Uh, we go step by step, and by the end of the sales school, you will know all the parts of the sales school uh, sales talk. And uh, if if nothing else, what matters is that you just uh, follow the system. You follow the sales talk. I remember my first customer very vividly. He was uh, by the end of the, my first day uh, and uh, there was one um, mom who was living together with uh, her parents. Uh, so uh, I was able to get a sit down. She was uh, still studying uh, herself in a college and she had a two year old daughter and I showed her like all the kids books. And uh, you know, the, the, the cycle was, was kind of like a rocky, you know, a little bit of shaking, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. And then I was like, okay, doesn't matter. I'm just going to do close word for word. Uh, and uh, once I got to the uh, last stage, then she was like, okay, you know, do you also accept cash? I was like, well, yeah, sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, me being a rookie, uh, it was my first order. We had to actually fill the physical order uh, on, on a paper. I didn't know what to put uh, where. So I asked her help uh, with that. And uh, that was my first customer. So even if you don't, know all the things uh, what Allah was was talking about it's still fine if you just uh, do the uh, plain sales talk and the uh, second thing what Allah was mentioning is that be a, a product uh, expert uh, if you are more convinced about the product then the mom will be also uh, more convinced and this is going to be actually the second part we're gonna uh, go a little bit into uh, our uh, product training and one of the first parts is going to be early learning series. And we have very awesome speaker doing that, uh, which is um, me. So I will share a little bit of um, uh, with you guys uh, then um, of our early learning system. Uh, hopefully giving you a couple of ideas um, um, what gives you a little bit of conviction. And mostly, of course, you have to do the work uh, on, on your own. And usually we do it like in a, in a workshops where we have products all over uh, and then we divide people in the groups uh, and then we have people going through the products and then we kind of share, uh, share the ideas. So this is something you have to do individually and uh, we do it once the quarantine gets over. But I will just share a couple of ideas that uh, can give you um, uh, perspective a little bit about this um, this topic. Um, this is me when uh, I was first time in the sales school. I'm the one we holding the the green card. Uh, and um, before my first summer, I actually I tried a little bit of a sales job as well, and I was working in a bank. So I had the opportunity to uh, sell. Um, it was HDB Bank, or now it's SCB Bank. Um, uh, insurance products. Actually, I was um, my job was to uh, collect contacts uh, for them, so the insurance brokers um, were able to uh, do then the sit down and, and sign them up for the for the product. Uh, and we had also like one of the trainings um, with one uh, uh, trainer in Estonia, uh, Eke Lainsalo was very good, uh, like this big sales guru back in the time, uh, and uh, you know he gave us the book closing secrets and I thought that you know those words they're gonna be magic and they're gonna be you know carrying me all over uh, the summer and I'm gonna be you know master closer what I found out uh, in a summertime that actually you know in if we talk about communication uh, in in overall then we only communicate with uh, seven percent of the words then there is 55% that is like nonverbals, which is the body language and 38 percent is sound what we make so this um, 
93% actually comes from our conviction. In my first summer, I was selling in a small town uh, called Tifton, Georgia. Uh, it was 14,000 people. So I started my uh, first weeks over there. And then I started working in the countryside and all the other uh, small cities around. And uh, once I kind of started my summer, you know, I was very excited, enthusiastic. Uh, when I had like sit down with the moms, then they were like telling me the Derki, you know, we already have like this hooked on phonics or we have like this uh, leapfrog. So we have like lots of good, good uh, uh, you know, programs. Uh, so we don't actually need any books. And me as not very convinced or convicted about the uh, benefits of our products, it was very hard for me to convince them just with the words. So that's why this uh, conviction part is, is very important because um, this actually represents this 93% of, uh, of the whole communication. Uh, and I found it out again, um, uh, practicing for uh, preparing for the second summer. I was uh, reading a book by this classic um, from the US, called, uh, his name is Sig Ziglar, uh, and he uh, started selling door to door some pots and pans, and then I think he sold also some life insurance, and he uh, dedicated his whole life into sales and became one of the most uh, well-known sales trainers, also in the US and all over the world. And one of the um, uh, chapters, what, what he has uh, in his book is that um, in order to make the sale happen, we need to close. And this was something what Allah was uh, talking right now. So if we don't close, then there's actually no sale. And he said this close, actually, if you move this first letter C, then what remains from this uh, word is lose. So you lose because you don't make the sale and also customer loses because uh, he or she is not getting the benefits. And the C stands for conviction. Uh, so if we are convinced, then it's easy for us also to close the sale. And that's one of what we're gonna talk as well a little bit today and trying to help your uh, uh, conviction. So I will talk a little bit uh, about the children brain development in, in general, since I'm a young parent, uh, my daughter now turned to nine month old uh, the past weekend. And uh, I started reading a lot of uh, books about uh, uh, raising uh, happy and uh, healthy and smart children. Uh, and this was one of the books or one of the um, things that was passed on by one of the uh, DSLs who has two children already. So I picked up this book and, and got some ideas. I will share like some ideas from there. Then how are products help with the brain development? Then I will do a short introduction uh, of our products. And most interesting part for you, what probably you are very used to, having this independent study time at home. So this is something to look forward. Uh, so at least being still. So this was the book where I was uh, talking about um, this uh, is um, this brain rules for babies and it's written by Dr. John J. Medina, who is a developmental molecular biologist and um, focused on the gene involved in a human brain development and genetics of physiotic disorders. So basically he has um, dedicated all his life studying how our brain work, what influences it and uh, what helps us to be more uh, smarter. There was uh, different ideas what uh, he um, passed on from there. But one of the things which is very important for us um, uh, going to US is, is, um, is this, that um, having the actual products or like reading the children, it is much more better than having them around the screen. And, and what he advises in his book is this, that having no screen time before age of two years old. Uh, because on average, right now, in American families, like a preschooler spends about uh, five hours per day, like either watching a TV, playing different games, uh, and uh, this is not very good for their brain development, and this is also not very good for their health. There is an American Association of Pediatrics that estimates that about 10 to 20% of real life violence can be attributed to exposure to media violence. There's like different cartoons that uh, expose us to the violence. There's different games that expose to our violence. 
Uh, and, uh, and this is something that is a huge issue because children are becoming more and more violent. A couple of uh, months ago, there was a news uh, in Estonian uh, a channel. Um, and uh, I remember they were saying that um, uh, the ambulance uh, is getting now more and more calls because of uh, kids getting mad once the uh, device is taken away from the children. <laughs> so this is like a you know, very funny situation, but uh, um, parents are having you know, to deal with it and it's becoming a bigger, bigger problem, not in the US, but also uh, all over the world. Then US, uh, preschoolers who watch like three hours of TV per day, are 30% more likely to have attentional problems. Uh, in America, there is this, well, not America, but there's disease, disease called ADHD, which basically is this attentional dis, uh, dysfunctional order. So people um, or the children, they have um, problems of keeping their attention. And it actually comes mostly because they spend too much as on a screen. Uh, so uh, having these actual books around actually helps to eliminate those things. Mm. And there's a couple of statistics as well that the uh, average age of this ADHD diagnosis is seven. Uh, age when the symptoms usually um, appear is like between ages three and six. And uh, this actually statistics is from um, 2016. Uh, this is what I got from the um, uh, governmental um, uh, website. But they're estimating that this is now close to 10 which comes up to uh, about seven to eight million children having this uh, disease, which is uh, a pretty uh, crazy factor and this actually is getting worse and worse. And also uh, what is um, uh, important, what came out from this book is this, that for every hour per day, the children spent watching a certain a baby DVD and videos, then the infants understood that on average, six to eight fewer words than infants who did not watch them. So those um, programs or things what I was mentioning before, this hooked on phonics, uh, uh, all those uh, other alternatives, which are supposedly designed to help kids to learn to read at very young age or help them with this um, uh, learning development, actually they are counterproductive and they help the kids to develop the speaking skills and the vocabulary much more slower than reading actual books. And Disney actually uh, was one of them uh, who um, uh, came up with this program. Uh, some of you maybe have heard about Baby Einstein series. Uh, and um, they actually had to recall uh, one of the product lines um, in 2007 because there was study made by some scientists, which also says that there's a recent study uh, of 900 children found that there was no evidence of cognitive benefit from watching TV during the first two years of life. In fact, baby DVDs may actually be damaging to young development. A 2007 study led by Frederick Zimmerman and Dr. Dimitri Christakis, both at University of Washington, found that infants learn six to eight fewer words in vocabulary for every hour of baby TVD that were watched than babies who never watched any videos. The most detrimental effect was seen in a babies between eight and 16 months old. So these things actually, what a lot of those companies were claiming uh, were not actually working. But this is a huge, huge industry right now where all the companies want to be in. And also for parents, it's like very uh, uh, convenient just to give like a tablet, a phone, uh, and, and let the kids to, to play with it. Of course, they're hoping that this is uh, beneficial for them, but uh, in uh, real facts, it uh, helps them to develop their brain and, and also the vocabulary. Uh, slower than reading actual books. And also what came out from this book is that in small children, reading is proven to help with language development and increased work recognition. Reading can also create a positive bond between parent and child. It can provide a great wind down before bedtime and spark an early interest in learning. 
And it actually already starts when children are uh, in the womb. So if um, the mom is carrying the children, and if you actually start reading them, it actually helps them with some word recognition and uh, sound recognition. So whenever the kids are born, then they um, become more familiar with this vibration and, and then also uh, they become more interested about getting this vibration more and more. So that's why reading to them is, is very uh, important. If uh, you want to study more about this, then I um, advise you to get this book and there's also some videos in, in a YouTube. So these are like some of the things um, or programs what I um, mentioned. One of them is Baby Einstein. Then the second uh, next to uh, the Baby Einstein on the right is this um, uh, um, Hooked on Phonics. Then down there is this ABC mouse, which is very um, widely used right now in the US and very, very popular. And then uh, there is also like a leapfrog uh down over there which looks like very old school uh, and uh, but it's still been used probably there it's like more modernized so there's like different um, uh, gadgets different programs uh, and um, you know we as knowing them and knowing also the facts that this doesn't help too much of this child brain development or helping them to learn and helping more uh, to go the other direction like getting different dissensional uh, disorder, like um, uh, diseases like ADHD or, um, you know, getting this attention spam. This is definitely something that parents want to wait, but they are not so well educated. So you knowing those facts actually helps you to be more convinced and selling the products a bit more. So the second idea is this, there has been a shift in American um, educational system where they are focusing now more on non-fiction. Um, it used to be more a fiction. So every time when the, the kids are given like some homework to read or, or some things what they read in the school, then back in a time, like 10, 15 years ago, it was mostly built up on these fictional stories. Uh, and only like a small percentage, like which was about 20%, was, was uh, non-fiction, but all our products, they uh, don't carry that much uh, fictional stuff. And maybe in Explore and Learn, there is like a little bit, some bedtime stories. So most of us, uh, our products, they carry like this non-fictional information, which is good news for us because now uh, all these curriculums, they um, are built up mostly on this non-fictional reading. So the children actually, are supposed to read more and more non-fictional things. Of course, you know, um, some parents, they, they go to libraries uh, and it's very easy to get like those fictional uh, stories, but uh, very hard to get these non-fictional uh, uh, products that teach them some actual things that they, they need to learn in school. So this is very cool what we are doing. So jumping into these products then, what do we have? Probably, um, you have seen them either on the slicks, maybe some of you have seen them physically. Um, and once the quarantine will be over, what I advise you to do is this, that definitely go over all the products, like uh, Alar was mentioning, the more you know about them, the more convinced you will be. Um, and you don't have to know everything, you don't have to know what is uh, in every page, but if you uh, know, you know the basic concepts, then that's what is um, good enough. But uh, it starts um, from the basics. Um, so the first series is this mice set series. So it helps them to learn the colors, shapes, and numbers, and also the basic words. Then it also has like these two um, uh, fun dictionaries. And <laughs> I was, when I was putting together this part today, then uh, uh, when I was, I reminded myself when I was demoing those, uh, my, my fun with words, there was this uh, explanation of a cow was uh, usually uh, giving in a demo that the cow is a large heavy animal that turns green grass into white milk. Nobody knows for sure how cows do it and cows don't talk about it. So <laughs> once you sell books more than one summer then those those things they stick around which is very fun. Um, but yeah this dictionary it has um, uh, over um, there is like a thousand words that explain them in a fun way. 
and uh, in a very simple uh, way as well. Then this uh, my books, what they do is this: that they are kind of like uh, flashcards, um, but they are organized in topics. Um, so let's like over here, it is like example of animal babies, and it gives you this different um, uh, animal babies, and how the kids can learn is is also through um, matching that they have to find the letters on the bottom of the page or, or words, and then they match the ones. Uh, and that are next to their pictures. And that way they memorize the words uh, through the pictures. And the coolest part, of course, is this, that uh, at the end of each my book, there is this peanut butter jelly proof posters. So there is one for alphabet, there is one for the shapes, one for numbers and one for uh, colors. And this is something what the parents uh, like a lot. Then the second series is this, this the most uh, fun series. It's called this Ask Me Why series. And do you know why they called Ask Me Why series? Ask me why. Why? Exactly. Kids ask all the time. Why, why, why? And, and that's what these books do, is that they give answers to all the whys through a school subjects. Like this is um, a sample from uh, this uh, mammals book. Uh, uh, like one of the things what we uh, used to also uh, in our demo was that who has a hairy nose. But did you guys know that this rhinoceros horn, it's actually not made of a bone, but it's made of the same material as our hair or our nails, but it's just pressed so tightly together, which is pretty crazy. It gives like tons of facts that even parents don't uh, know sometimes. It makes uh, learning fun for the parents, but also engaging for the, for the kids. And there's a very, very short um, uh, stories that uh, don't lose the engagement. The most fun part uh, for those who are into science or who are like these hands-on learners is this Explore and Learn series. And what this Explore and Learn series does is that it gives um, about um, 50 different projects, what kids can do, and they are connected with the topics. Like for example, in this, um, uh, the natural world, there is, um, uh, you know, they can learn about the tree of life, they make old collage, they can learn about how plants live, they make their own rainbow flower, or, um, you know, how the fish uh, or the sea animals live, and they can make their own fish tank. And what the parents like the most is that uh, once the tank is made and the fish is in, that you don't have to clean the tank. So this is uh, also something that parents uh, like a lot. But this is very engaging uh, um, uh, that parents can also be part of. And, and also why the science projects are, are very important is because in American schools, they have a lot of uh, science projects. And sometimes it's very, very hard to get those ideas. You know, there is these different fairs and then you present those uh, ideas over there. So, um, um, so they get some ideas over there and they very appreciate uh, those things. Then there's like a couple of cool posters uh, 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 and uh, like one of them is like this human size, my body that uh, teaches kids um, about different body parts. And there's also this constellation um, a poster that actually also glows in dark, which is uh, very cool and kids love it. So once you kind of have those posters and you show them uh, on real life, then the kids go crazy. And once kids go crazy, then, then parents' wallets also uh, come out. Uh, and the last part in this um, early learning series, this is kind of like a bonus, like um, uh, Alar was saying that every time we have bonus material. Uh, so we have also bonus material in this early learning series, which is called Family Bible Library. Uh, and um, why this is a bonus material is because uh, it actually helps children to teach moral values and uh, or like this character building traits as we call them. So there is a 36 uh, building blocks of character, like honesty, uh, obeying, faithfulness, uh, and they are put into stories that um, were also in the Bible. And they also make it uh, very uh, engaging. There is like different questions uh, and um, there is um, different projects also what they can do. So there's like one example over here as well that there's a story about 
and they talk uh, uh, made God and built the, the ark and prepared everybody for, for the big uh, uh, fall. So saved a lot of animals and people. Uh, and yeah, so this is um, like a brief overview of our products. And this is now something for you. So uh, what you can do individually. So this is the most exciting part. This individual uh, study, what you can do. So first thing, what you can do is complete Advantage University. Uh, children's books, sites, and apps section. Maybe some of you already have completed all uh, university, which is very great. Maybe some of you don't know nothing what I'm talking about right now, which is also totally okay. So we'll briefly go over. So each of you, uh, once uh, you have uh, given to your manager, like a dealer agreement and the parent support letter, and once those are sent in, then your secretary from the US will send you an account number, which is over here up on the left corner, your account number. With what you can create yourself a password to advantageforDealers.com uh, website. Um, and if you uh, create yourself like this password, you can log into the system and you should kind of see this home screen. Uh, and over here, you also see Advantage University. So once you go over there, it kind of gives you these different um, uh, paragraphs, different things to, to work through. And one of them is this children's books, sites and apps. Uh, and over there, you there's like different videos that kind of goes more in depth about the products. And at the end, something uh, that is most fun is this, that it will actually have some quizzes. So you have to pay attention uh, and we actually see results. So you have to uh, make sure that you get the answers uh, correctly. Um, but uh, this is very uh, fun and engaging way actually for you to study as well, uh, because you can uh, see the videos, you can actually get more information about the products and just to make sure that you remember everything correctly there and there is like also a small quiz. Second thing what you can do is this, that watch Janet Sweet product deep dive uh, videos. Uh, Janet Sweet is our um, uh, product developer. He uh, has worked uh, most of his life with um, as American school system. So he knows uh, what um, the needs or what are uh, the standards for the states and also for the uh, wall America. Uh, and then he's been um, making our uh, products to go hand in hand with uh, what they are learning in school. And he is explaining, or she's explaining uh, her ideas on each product category, how these are applying to the things what the kids are learning in school. And then one of the videos is focusing on this uh, early learning products, what I was just uh, sharing you uh, some ideas. Um, once you go to YouTube, then uh, you can put in product deep dive or you can uh, search SW dealers, um, uh, a site over there and you can subscribe and you, you can see like different uh, videos. Then the third is this that research on your own different available learning systems for children and discuss it with your student manager. So once you go to uh, you know you can Google what are like these different kind of uh, uh, early learning programs because once you kind of do and you get to know the competition then it's very easy for you to uh, uh, deal with different objections or once they kind of say that they have some things and you actually know the details what those things are, are teaching, then uh, you, know, you don't have to uh, get frightened or, or kind of lose the sale over there or lose your own uh, belief and conviction that they don't need those uh, products. Uh, and the lastly, uh, what I was mentioning before as well is going through the actual products. So once the quarantine will be over, all of you are able to go to our offices and uh, we have in all of our offices, we have those products. If some of them are missing, then ask your student manager. So each country, we should have um, the sets of uh, the actual products. So you are able to go them through product by product, page by page, and uh, kind of get this um, good overview and idea what our products uh, the cover. And to, Sum it up, just uh, remember 
what uh, young man Sig Ziglar thought that uh, in order to be convinced or in order to be convicted um, or in order to convince somebody else, then you have to be convicted yourself. And uh, uh, if you want to close, then you need to be more convinced yourself. So thank you very much. This was my part. Uh, Tunis, do we have uh, also some uh, questions? Yes, we do. Uh, there is, um, there are a few of them here. Uh, they are uh -huh. actually here in Zoom. So yeah. first question is uh, Erki. Um, but we also have Squeeds.com membership. So that's also bad for children's brain then? Um, good. Good uh, question, uh, and uh, I wouldn't, you know, put myself now in this expert category. But this is, um, uh, yeah, some studies what has been made that at certain age, like too much of the screen time is is not very good. So, uh, but limited, it is uh, okay. And over there, there is also a, a site for the parenting, like for parents, and and they um, go through these different kind of stages of the kid development and what is good or not as well. So um, I would say that it's not totally bad, but for sure, uh, having actual books, it's much more bad. But it's like uh, such a short, um, just a small um, um, range that, you know, zero to two that we are talking about over here. But our products or this squeeze actually goes all the way up to the second grade level. So it's just, age of 10, so it's like eight more years after that, it's also covered in squeeze. And I guess when, um, when you were talking, you said also that it's, uh, um, it's, it's not so good for the kids if they are less than two. Was that the fact you said, that it's harmful for kids to look screened when they're less than two? Um, what, what, what was the question again? Uh, so I, I guess I just wanted to add in that you said that um, the screens are not so beneficial when kids mm -hmm. are very young. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I would say that the squeeze, squeeze and, and, and Homer themselves are like meant more for like two, three and up. So they're quite yeah. engaging. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, uh, so we have actually more questions here. Let's see. Um, Erki, what's your favorite project? I like the, I like, the volcano project with picking soda and vinegar. Okay, that's good. Cool. <laughs> uh, some uh, Yevgeny uh, said that Advantage University actually wasn't working for the last seven days and it did the same for many guys. Is there a workaround? Uh, thank you for pointing it out. So, if you guys have any like technical errors, you can write me or your DSL and we pass it along. I wasn't aware of that, so I will, I will ask for mm -hmm. Nike. Yeah. Yeah, and please always make a screenshot as well. So make a screenshot of the error and then send it uh, to Tunis uh, or one of your DSLs and, and we can look into it. Um, so let's see what's the question here. During Squeeze demo, you show all sections or just ask me to save some more for reclosing. Do you just show ask me or do you show more uh, during demo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's very individual. Um, mostly, uh, I think yeah, you, what you want to uh, avoid is that you, you want to avoid overselling. So if you demo too much, then the people can go over uh, the, the buying line uh, and the interest starts to decline because the, um, the kind of rule of, of thumb is this, that uh, if, if you can always like re-demo them or you can demo them more. Uh, but if you oversell them, then it's very hard to get them back on the track. So, so yeah, demo English is, is smarter. So usually one, maximum two products, and then leaving the third product uh, for redemoing. That's what I would do. Cool. And I uh, wanted to close off here. Um, oh my God. You blew my mind with the clothes without the C, which stands for conviction. So it was a good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also got an, a good idea uh, uh, from Yevgeny, the, what we can say in, in this um, uh, aquarium project that 
fish don't die and kids don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very good to make the, the fish tank from the paper. Cool. Very uh, cool. Questions are done. So thank you everybody for tuning in and uh, being with us in this precious hour. And we're gonna talk again next week with new speakers, new host. Thank you. See you again. Ciao. See ya.